All right, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Nixon Chisonga. I am from Mongushi University uh, under the School of Social Sciences uh, in Zambia. I am going to present our study on charcoal movements in Zambian cities of Lusaka and Kitwe uh, from peri-urban markets to low and median suburbs. And I'm grateful for this uh, participation in this symposium on fuel in the tropics from cooking stoves to deforestation. And this invitation was extended to me uh, by uh, the International... It was extended to me by the International uh, Society of Tropical Foresters as, as well as the International Forestry Working Group of the Society of American Foresters. And so I am very much uh, grateful uh, for this uh, participation. Um, let me now, as a way of an introduction and background to the study, uh, attempt to discuss uh, uh, this study in detail. Uh, charcoal is an important energy source that accounted for over 70% of the energy consumed in Zambia and there are uh, several factors to this and this has happened uh, over the last 10 to 20 years. Uh, prolonged droughts contribute to low harvests for the majority of rural poor who largely depend on agriculture leading to food insecurity thereby taking up charcoal production as an immediate solution. There are also uh, factors to, to do with erratic uh, rains as a result of climate uh, change that has reduced levels of dam water on which uh, hydroelectric uh, power depends. And it has affected Zambia and other countries within South, Southern Africa uh, to the extent that uh, uh, the energy supply is now um, uh, load shaded to a period of up to 16 hours a day, especially in the last uh, uh, 10 years. And that has affected uh, low and medium households uh, and, and, and they now rely on charcoal for their energy supply. Although and, and, and we must add that although household access to electricity has increased in the last 10 years uh, from 35% in 2021, it has increased to, to 35% in 2021 compared to 17% in 2008, electricity does not appear to be an immediate solution for the majority of the households uh, for their energy needs because it is still remains uh, costly and load shedding often results in frequent uh, power disruptions and so it does not uh, provide a solution for the majority of the households. This study emerged out of concern that a huge body of literature indicates that charcoal consumption in urban areas is greatest among consumers, accounting for 85% in, in peri-urban areas compared to those in low and medium house, households. Um, uh, well, a number of studies as documented in literature on charcoal in Zambia Although there are a lot of studies in literature as documented on Zambia, the majority of these studies have analyzed charcoal from the production uh, point. Very few studies uh, study examine charcoal from the consumption point. Uh, examples such as Mwitwa and Makano's uh, works of 2011, as well as the, uh, the other studies by Nyembe of 2011, have examined charcoal production, have examined charcoal from the consumption side, although they literally are examining the charcoal movement from the side of the rural uh, production side to 
the consumption side. So it's a movement from the rural uh, production uh, point to the consumption point, which often resides in urban areas. And it was their arguments that in fact, this consumption is as a result of proximity uh, to urban areas. So the production areas are actually done in such a way that uh, they follow proximity to the consumption point, which is uh, often in urban areas. This study examines charcoal movement inside Zambian cities of Lusaka and Kitwe using the conceptual framework uh, with five pathways. And we use it as an analytical um, uh, category uh, for examining uh, charcoal movement in urban centers of Lusaka and uh, Kitwe. Uh, these pathways include one, from rural producer areas to peri-urban areas, mostly by wholesalers. Number two, from rural producer areas to peri-urban low and medium density households. Mostly, this is where one or two bags are bought on the roadside by individuals and the transportation is often by uh, private vehicles or indeed motorbikes, uh, bicycles, etc. Number three, from peri-urban areas to another smaller peri-urban area. Number four, from peri-urban area to another uh, peri-urban area and then to low and medium density areas. Number five, from peri-urban area directly either to low or medium density areas. Now, this conceptual framework is very significant for this study because it is the one that we use uh, in order to examine charcoal movements within uh, urban areas. And it was quite uh, uh, significant uh, in this study as we uh, shall show uh, uh, in just a moment. Uh, the study methods the study uh, used a rapid assessment uh, survey or surveys at two intervals. One was done between uh, September and November in 2012, and the second and follow-up uh, rapid survey was done uh, between May and September 2019. Uh, now, between the two periods, a total of 941 individual consumers of charcoal at active charcoal markets were interviewed. And this was meant to demonstrate the movement of charcoal from that peri-urban area to the consumer's area of residence. The results actually indicate uh, that uh, low density suburbs and medium density suburbs um, were, were receiving huge volumes of charcoal and uh, consumers uh, in fact uh, uh, the findings in fact suggest that a lot of uh, uh, consumers talked to or interviewed suggested that they bought uh, the larger volume uh, kind of bags in the range of 90 kgs 50 kg and 25 kg bags and these were often uh, moved to low density and medium density suburbs from the peri urban areas uh, these results were quite significant because they provide um, uh, important contributions to low medium and density suburbs uh, contribution to charcoal consumption and movement inside Zambian cities, and so this this uh, this this study found that actually charcoal was widely distributed to low, medium, and peri-urban households for household use, and 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 so we using this study we actually demonstrate that. Uh, 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 charcoal movement was actually not just ending up in the uh, peri-urban areas, but it did actually, uh, the majority of it actually uh, ended up in low and medium uh, density areas because 56% of the consumers 
where from where from low and medium density suburbs and these are the ones who purchased the larger volume in terms of bags uh, uh, and so it is concluded that peri-urban areas were mainly simply receiver and distributor points for onward charcoal movements into low and medium density suburbs of Zambian uh, urban centers. Uh, thirdly, this study also concludes that the use that household use use charcoal for cooking and heating due to high electricity tariffs and uh, frequent disruptions in power supply as already highlighted earlier in this presentation now it is also using charcoal for social gatherings as well as construction and finally fourthly uh, this discussion and this study does highlight uh, an important contribution that charcoal movement thrives under conditions of informality and 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 so that is what we find in this study there are key implications in terms of policy that needs to be highlighted here number one methodology methodologically there appears to be an, an apparent disconnect uh, that is evident between the findings of many research that base their findings on estimates and the findings in this study that assess actual charcoal movements be based on bias. Uh, this might be explained as simply the absence of similar previous studies on charcoal movements inside urban cities to provide a basis for comparison and learning. Uh, it could also be that self-reported questions used in this study undervalued or indeed overvalued the information from bias. Uh, however, uh, policy implications uh, may still remain unclear uh, in this study, but should we begin to suggest, maybe it should be suggested that uh, this study actually provides actual reflections of charcoal movements in low, medium, and high density suburbs. And if that is so, it might require agent sourcing of efficient, cheaper, and environmentally friendly uh, energy alternatives. Uh, if that is the case, then relevant parties, uh, such as the forestry and energy departments, forestry and energy regulatory institutions, interest organizations, the media, environmental activists and researchers need to be cognizant of the dangers of generalizations um, based on few specific cases. It may also be that the questions employed in this study to assess the charcoal movements in Musaka and Kitwe did not adequately capture the full extent of the problem. If so, different research uh, questions are required, are required to be developed to measure the demand dynamics, trends, and movements within urban areas. I thank you very much uh, for this presentation.